Over the years, many people have been asking me about how to use conscious communication and the science of behavior changes in growth hacking online, particularly in social media like LinkedIn. Now, thanks to Maha, who has been doing a stream on how to do micro habits for herself, and, and she kindly actually went live and did this. You can see this is part two video of this other video, which I'll put a link of below. Now, Maha had actually done a micro habit coaching session, which went so deep into um, actionable insights that we decided to actually do a tutorial to share it widely with three micro habits, not one, that are relevant for Maha to use in LinkedIn. And so this video is basically going to walk you through these three micro habits, which are destined for what we call growth hacking, but it's really for startup founders, CEOs, and leaders who are too busy really to have full focus on social media, who don't necessarily have the budget to hire a social media whole team or person and uh, still need to get some stuff done and, and, and build presence online. Now, uh, this is an experiment. Uh, this is not me saying this is how you should do it. This is a scientific experiment which we with Maha co-created. And so I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be actually trying this out yourself and giving some feedback below in the comments about how it worked for you. Now, the science that we're using behind it is not experimental, but the way we're going to show you how you could use your time wisely to grow your presence as a startup in social media, in particular in LinkedIn, will be probably very interesting. Now, what we're using is the periodic table of conscious communication. If you're interested in finding out more about what this is, um, there'll be plenty of other videos on that on our channel. And any colored text is basically referring to elements from the periodic table. We'll be focusing today on green, blue, red is one of the elements of the think category below in the periodic table, which helps um, and has for many years been helpful to understand influencers online. Uh, from the oldest influencers that I've been color coding to very modern influencers today, we're going to be using those three colors. I'll walk you through what it means in this particular context. And we'll be showing you a micro habit with um, a trigger, which is really something that makes you aware of that habit. So something that starts the habit. Habit change is easy and simple. It is not like trying to change your entire way of working. So this is a trigger happens. In our case, it will be mostly a LinkedIn trigger. You do something with an intention, which is why we call it conscious communication, because your intention is clear with a particular behavior, nonverbal, and some scripted words that we'll show you how to, which then lead to a reward, make you want to do that again and again. It creates a habit loop. That's basically a micro habit. So we'll show you three micro habits for this. Now, one step back. Mm, social media is absolutely full and overflowing with junk content, lots of lots of content. Um, so I didn't want to add a video on more content creation. I wanted to bring an angle to this, which is what people have been asking me. A lot of people I'm coaching as, as CEOs are saying to me, I don't want to go. I just don't want to go. Um, I don't want to be part of that toxic mess on social media. There's a lot of fear, um, but they still need authority. So we're going to be focusing on how to use social media, not just to get clicks, but to actually create a sense of authority without creating that toxic environment of highly competitive and very ego-driven conversations online. And what we're, what we're going to be focusing on as well is how to build relationship sales as opposed to one-time buy. Uh, a lot of advice online I've been following for years is literally just to get a click. It doesn't really help you build relationships. So here we're focusing on, as a startup, you need to build relationship and, and, and over time build trust. We're also focusing on collective intelligence. Now, this is a biggie because often all the advice you find is generally about me, my startup, and me standing out. Uh, very little I found is about creating a healthy collective use of social media. So we're focusing on that here, as well as influence without it being manipulative, hiding intentions or being a bit clickbaity. Um, also, we have the psychological safety that's built into these micro habits. By that, I mean that a lot of people are afraid of going to social media just because they feel unsafe of the comments, the type of interactions that they might have or they have had in the past. 
um, and also building, and, and this is, you know, Maha is going to be using these, but others might be using them as well, to build confidence for Maha without coming across as arrogant or trying to be superior to others. So that's the sort of intention of why we're doing these. Um, we'll be using the science of human to human and human to self connection. Uh, the bottom of the periodic table are things like mental models that help you think inside your head about connection. And the top is about, you know, what you say, what you do and why you say it, which is the human to human connection. We're using all of that set of micro habits. Quick example. Um, this is a classic uh, of a speech that was very influential by uh, Mandela in 94, which was color coded years ago. And of course, the, the topic of online communication and influence is not new. What we bring in here is a completely different approach than just scripting a particular message. Here we're bringing in an angle which is using the science of green, blue, red. If you haven't seen this video, I'll do a link so you can watch the actual order, the proportion of this green, blue, red framework, which has got nothing to do with personality modeling. This is really just behavioral modeling. So anybody can use green, blue or red at any time. It's got nothing to do with who you are as a person, which is why it's so powerful. Uh, so if you haven't seen this, watch it and it will help you make sense of this particular micro habit. In this context, we'll be using blue as the reference point anchor, which is Maha, the CEO of Gilo Technologies. So in this case, me is blue uh, as Maha. And that means when you're talking, for example, Maha, about informing or expressing something which belongs to you and Gilo, that's going to be color coded as blue. Uh, adapting and connecting to the people on your social media networks, in particular LinkedIn, that's going to be the green color. And red is about influencing to buy, click, follow, or do some actions online. So that's what we mean here by the green, the blue, and the red anchoring on this particular context. And because of the order that we know works, uh, usually a good idea to start from green, focusing on your network and followers, building trust and connection before starting to focus on posting content, either storytelling or informing or pragmatic content as CEO and co-founder of, of Gilo. And then eventually getting to that juicy influence of your product and service, whether it's fixing problems with your service or testing about product market fit either way that's the red that, that a lot of social media marketers are entirely focused on with a bit of this but here this is the bit that's often a blind spot which we're going to focus on with the first micro habit now the idea here is to break down the rhythm think of the music metaphor the drum beat over time the rhythm of social media is really important. Most, most people know this already, that you can't just post once, you have to do it over time, sustain the effort. Now, how do you do that? I've worked for years with marketeers and often they just say, oh, you just start a social media calendar and start posting. Yeah, how? And how do you build that background trust before you even start posting? That's the thing we're gonna call the connecting daily. So that should be in this sort of experimental format, large part of your focus. So daily connecting with people without trying to inform, without trying to do anything to click, just connecting empathically with people. The second rhythm, like think of this as the sort of high pitch, this is the medium, uh, and then you'd have the bass underneath. The weekly posting is something that belongs to you, like an opinion. And the red is really the sales, what we call usually the call to action or the test of the call to action, landing page testing or events that you're inviting people to sign up to. Whatever you're trying to get them to do is the red, which comes much less. So with that equation, you can apply this formula in multiple social media channels and scale up as your operations grow. But for today, we're going to focus only on LinkedIn so that you can see how it works and test it out for yourself. Now, first micro habit. Let's call it the daily connecting micro habit, trigger action reward. Um, so first of all, the trigger in this case could be literally every workday. Um, we've been testing this particular micro habit for years now. And in the morning, 15 minutes is enough. You know, you don't need to overdo it. 15 minutes on your smartphone, you know, in the public transport or walking back from the gym, wherever you are, but 15 minutes of completely focused and protected time where you, you do that, you carve out that time for yourself every day. And the, the intention of this is, is to give yourself permission to tap into the curiosity rather than trying to always do things with an agenda to get likes, but literally just follow the curiosity. 
uh, you know, Maha, as, as a, as a co-founder, you have a huge curiosity for science. So where does your curiosity take you? Who are you going to look at? What posts are you going to click on because of your curiosity? That's the starting point. Start from intention. And, and what you can do practically in behaviors is obviously look through the feed, um, and like generously, just like things that you really do like. Comment kindly, share with your praise, look at people, follow people even, and sometimes perhaps even connect with people. I'll show you a few examples of how you can actually do that practically. Wording-wise, like, how do you say that? Well, sharing intent, interesting posts is not often enough. It's really nice to actually add a positive phrase without trying to shine yourself, just focusing entirely in a green way on the other person. So with a positive phrase or summary about it, destined to your followers, making it factual, uh, and possibly even easy for people to agree without it being like excessively flattering, like some people do. And the reward should be then that when people look at who's been looking them up, right? So then they're much more likely to trust you. And when you start posting your own blue and red later, they're much more inclined to like and repost themselves than if you just post your blue and red all the time, like without having any form of connection with these people. So it's a way of demonstrating your humble ability to focus empathically on others. So an example of that could be that um, when you like, you know, obviously people tend to click on the like button, but there's plenty of ways you can get creative here and start standing out and showing the person that you've noticed, you know, choosing carefully in a green way, which one of these would work best for that content usually is a nice little, nice little touch and, and sharing with your thoughts rather than just reposting. Adding your thought could be something like a scripted sentence like this, you know, this well-researched article by Maha is worth reading if you're interested in X because it highlights some very practical insights about the development of Y, you know, whatever you feel was interesting in summary to that to help other people think about, yeah, I do want to click on that too. So that's kind of like quality, quality sharing. Um, looking people up as well. Um, this is Mirella, somebody I've been coaching for a few years and who's who's been posting, I'll show you some examples of what Mirella's posting as well, really great posts uh, on the example of Blue Micro Habit. But you can just look at people and be curious. Um, often when I'm, I'm doing work with uh, founders, they think it's somehow weird to look people up before they meet them, whether it's investors or, or team colleagues. But actually, it's kind of, I would say, the homework to be, to be able to connect with somebody. You know, it's like their online CV. So I would say it's like doing due diligence about the people you talk to. It's a minimum requirement to understand where they've been to school so that you can adapt your language to them and be green. So it's a really important thing to just look them up, follow them if you think they're worth following. And um, you can do a lot more than that, actually. You can sort of, you know, give kudos nowadays on LinkedIn for a recommendation if you've worked with them. That's really elegant. Uh, very few people do that, but it feels wonderful to have somebody without you asking them to do so, giving you a recommendation. You can do one of those a week. And, and it's a beautiful piece of um, genuine praise. Connecting with people that you don't yet know. Now, I know that LinkedIn says you shouldn't do that because it downs the quality of the network. But if you find a person that you really think is interesting and that you have a green way to add a note to them when you, you haven't got them in your first network, just a green note, something that is for them relevant, not that you like them, that's blue, but something like you've been working Chris Voss, uh, with FBI hostage negotiation for years. And it's particularly interesting the way you tackle accusation audits in a hostile situation. I'd be really interested in following you more and having a chat about this with you. Add note, suddenly he might go, oh, that's interesting. Let's connect. Um, so that was, you know, a few examples from the first micro habit. The second micro habit is now the second rhythm, the, the, the weekly rhythm of posting. Now, this is, this is something that is literally, you have millions of posts online that is competing for attention on this. So um, my recommendation here is to not overdo it and not try and make this too big because there's so much out there that less is more. So sandbox it for 60 minutes a week, no more than that. Like, particularly Maha, as you're a good writer, you've been writing scripts, so you can really manage to nail a short piece of text in 60 minutes, perhaps on a Sunday, and then post it later in the week when people are viewing it, or, you know, on a Monday morning, but somewhere where you have mind space. So you can take that one little slot to think about something blue with the intention of gratitude. Now, why gratitude? 
most of the posting you'll find is not gratitude. It's either people having a rant or sharing something that they know is their expertise or trying to show off their expertise. It's very rare to see genuine gratitude that is without a hidden agenda. So this could just be your gratitude moment. It's a definite lack of gratitude online. Most people are more interested in complaining. So you could combine gratitude with either learning the intention of showing responsibility or even your ego. And by ego, I mean a positive, neutral ego. Um, feel out your self-compassion, showing something to do with your how you, you, you're, you're being kind to yourself in the rush of not burning out. Um, or pragmatism, showing gratitude about pragmatism, for example. You combine gratitude with any of those. Um, the behavior is that you write less than 3,000 characters. That means it's, it fits into a post and doesn't go into a, a longer article. Um, in any of the following formats, listicles, failure examples, explainers, good news, or a behind-the-scene point of view. I'll show you a few examples of people who've done that online that I think are inspiring in a second. Um, but you can just basically try out different formats and see which one works for you that you feel is most congruent, meaning aligned between your, your thinking, your words, and your nonverbal, so that it feels right, it feels honest. Um, the words, I would suggest you talk in first person to a specific group of people who follow you, um, not just to general online. And in your case, Maha, because of the way you're working, perhaps with that radical candor, and your thoughts in a, in a sort of tangible way, not too academically, but really just like, this is what happens, emotional, relevant, uh, real, that you can touch and feel that is simple to read. And the reward is that if you, if you write this weekly, you're basically showing how you walk the talk. It's, it goes beyond informing of your expertise, which by the way, they can see in your LinkedIn profile. Um, everybody can click on that. So they don't need to, you don't need to overdo, I'm great at this, I'm great at that. That can just be demonstrated by the way you put an opinion out. Um, it also builds your professional confidence, your positive ego, and your brand as a leader who's, who's able to reflect on things. So an example of listicle, this is this guy who's doing these these regular posts on 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 LinkedIn, entertaining reads. In listicle is like really easy to follow. These three, these five, these seven. It's usually uh, odd numbers: three, five, seven, nine. Um, it could be lessons. It could be tips. It could be myths. It could be blind spots. It could be something just a structure that makes people want to read on. So Shiva has been off work and has been writing about things with regards to that experience of going off work and coming back to work. So this is one way you can approach this is writing a listicle of something. Another way is you can do a series. It's kind of like a listicle, but over several posts. Mirella, who I mentioned earlier, is doing a brilliant job of, even though, you know, she's actually a leader in a, in a, in a company that's, you know, a corporate setup, she's talking about mountaineering. And the mountaineering experiences are used to illustrate how she's been learning about leadership. So talking about a hobby, bringing it into the topic of leadership. In this case, this is lesson one of a series. And uh, you can find on her LinkedIn all the one of series that you can read up on in, in little bites. Now, actually, I did a color coding of this because I wanted to show you that you know, on this particular micro habit, it can be quite blue, but even though it's blue, Mirella used a bit of green here and there and beautifully written so that it keeps you, you know, engaged with the green sentences. How did I do it? Um, I work full time and I'm a single mom here. I color coded it as green, assuming that some of the readers are also uh, mums working. And, and then at the end, there is that little red call to action, in, which in this case is just a suggestion uh, a recommendation for others to do work with making an objective, making a plan and, and, and so on, which is the key point of her, her post. So you can, you can do this in a number of ways. This is another example, which is quite old, actually, that I took from, from when apology for Connie, um, the Finnish company doing uh, escalators, elevators. And this was in India. And I took out all their sales brochures and their marketing team was really interested in how the performing brochures would work. But none of the brochures were as remotely interesting as this little hundred years of Connie's failures book. Everybody had that book on their table. And it was literally a hundred stories of how Connie over the last hundred years had failed technically engineering problems and how they'd solved that failure. 
very reassuring to architects and building managers. So, you know, super interesting read, actually. So you could take that idea of showing how you've solved failures with your technical skills or engineering skills. And that's another way of bringing an angle into what you post on a weekly basis. Explainers, plenty of those out there, infographics, how to's, things that help people understand a complex abstract thing. In your case, you're working with machine learning. It's pretty abstract. You could make some visuals to help people understand the whole expertise, how this, what you're working on is different to Grammarly, for example, and show it, uh, show how much better it is actually. So this is an example of how human-centered design is migrating to planet-centric design as a tag along for the latest news about Patagonia. Very clever. So it gets a great attraction because of the news. Good news um, is actually something from World Economic Forum. Now, they, they literally just post a lot of great technological breakthroughs about sustainability, which I follow regularly because rather than having this doomsday thinking of the world is, is that going down the drain, we're all going to die. There's a bit of a, an optimism behind this, which then you can take that good news about your field. What's the great news about this? Uh, lots of people, influencers have been using that particular format successfully. Um, points of view. Mm. Anna has been doing these posts for a while now, and I follow her because uh, they're extremely human. Now, she's working from Israel and posts these wonderfully human and, and, and down to earth, like, like the one about um, why people should be talking about their personal life quite comfortably, even though they're in a professional environment. And I actually color coded this one as well to show you just how much green there is in this, even though it's a blue post. There's still here a lot of green, you know. I left work at 2 p.m. Actually, I do this every Tuesday. My colleagues know why. I don't tell them that I have an important meeting to attend to, that I have an emergency. And why is that green? It's because that's what most people do. They feel they have to justify and so on. So she's been really green about um, the whole issue of talking about your personal life. And uh, her red at the end is a simple little don't you think that gets people to either comment or point their, point their opinions into the, the link below. There is a huge interesting value about connecting to people as a human being rather than as a professional behind a mask. So this is what Anna is doing here. Um, you can pause and reread this in your own time. But there's, there's, there's plenty of good examples. Now, if you want to break it down into three buckets with the green, blue, red, it goes like this. You start with something a bit green about why it's interesting for the people you're writing to. So you might be writing to women founders of startups, for example, in which case you'd voice that. Then you put your your blue with some form of hook that makes it interesting and engaging. You know, once upon a time or this week I was walking home, a homeless man stopped me in the street, uh, challenging story. And then I was grateful about this that I wanted to share with you. You can make it really, really short and, and punchy. And then at the end, some kind of engagement red question like, what about you? Drop your answers in the comment or something even shorter that gets people to comment and engage in your post or even share it forward. So that could be a recipe for you to test out in multiple ways on your weekly. Now, lastly, um, the red. The red is the one that, you know, advertising agencies are, 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 are making a lot of money off and telling you campaign planning. And here I would say whatever rhythm suits your company. It might be monthly, it might be quarterly, it might be even every few weeks. But here the idea is that you spend maybe two hours planning this carefully, you build an ad, you build a, an event, or you build some kind of um, streaming or something that is relevant to your topic, either to sell, like to test a sale, or that you're actually bringing people for a conversation, which is often done these days to get attention. And the campaign here is the, with the intention of fixing problems. Your, your, your company is working with a product market fit. So you're never sure of your product market fit until you've, you've hit uh, gold with your investors and, and your cash flow is coming in. So until that point, you're constantly testing your product market fit. And underneath that is understanding what is the problem you're actually fixing with your service or product. So the intention here is to really just test and understand those problems that you're fixing. So everything else is secondary. So, you know, behavior wise, you could either write an invitation to follow your page if you don't have anything ready. That's a good thing you can do for the first few weeks and months. Um, you can also invite them to an event that you've organized or a poll. I'll show you an example. And obviously you can 
split test ads. By split testing, I mean testing different versions of them to see which ones perform better. And in, in terms of wording, this is where it's really important to have that sort of green, then blue, then red script. Now, there's plenty of models. Uh, you know, some people use the IDA model, which is uh, attention, interest, and desire before action. Others use other models. There's literally hundreds of models out there. Some of them have been proven to work already for over 100 years. Others are just being iterated. The, the key thing here is not so much which model you're using, is to make sure that it's relevant and green to the person you're solving the problem for. So I'll show you an example of how that can be done. And then the reward is that if you're able to be green enough, then you'll most likely get those clicks. So here's an example of an invite. Um, this is actually an invite. If you're inviting people to follow your channel, this is Green Elephant. So you can do it by a private message or a post, which is the generic way of doing it. And, you know, they have a pre-scripted message, which I would recommend you sort of making a bit. And you can send that to an individual and, and I'll invite them to follow your page. You can always do that. And of course, you can you can do this bulk as well. Um, you can have, I think, uh, bulk up to 250 at a time. You send out a like, follow our page, follow our page, which is much less friendly than an individual message, but can also be good, good to get you going at the first few months of your of your online presence. And then this is an example from Anul, um, who's our CEO, who's been reposting an event. Now, what we do is we do streaming, as you've seen, probably if you followed our YouTube channel. Uh, this is a streaming that's actually happening tonight with Scion Games. Now, I post this from the Green Elephant page into a streaming event in LinkedIn, but then that's not enough. Most people just don't care. So then individuals like Anul in the team repost with a personal message. And that's what you would do is you would repost with a nicely crafted green uh, with a bit of blue and red message that would encourage people to go, oh, why would it be relevant for me to join? So these are really just how we can, we can create a script of green, blue and red to, to get people interested in what you're going to do. The, the, the other example I wanted to show you is Fuzul, who's a startup in Africa. Uh, now, they're doing really great work with job market, double-sided marketplace, and they do these wonderful polls, which you can test out as well, where in LinkedIn, you've probably seen the button. You can just do a four-question poll. It's pretty limited, but you can engage people by understanding your product market fit by asking simple polls. Um, interesting thing they've done as well, which is that if you, you only have three questions, you have to be, get creative, so they have this my answers in the comments, which is a great way to get people to add comments, which is what obviously the algorithms are looking for is engagement through comments. So you can do all sorts of fun things with polls, you know, to, to test if your problem that you're solving, for example, Maha, in your case, you're working with machine learning and working, uh, for example, academics and students, you can use a question geared towards students and test the problem that you're solving for them and calibrate your problems so that you can improve your website, for example. That, that's something you can do here. Now, the obvious one, which is what most advertising agencies are focusing on, is split testing. So, you know, you might have an ad. This is Auntie, uh, a great Finnish company who does uh, work with psychological safety and coaching and helping people feel, you know, psychologically better at work. And there is online therapy. So you, you, can, you can buy that service online. Now, this ad, as you can see, you have a download, you have a button. Uh, it's kind of like you're, here you could do several versions. You could take a title A and a title B and test which one performs better, picture A and a picture B, just one thing to change over two different campaigns that you run in parallel and see which one performs best and learn by doing which one works best and keep doing that over time and see which ones you should then use in bigger systems of marketing with more money and marketing campaign budgets behind them. So you can do split testing, obviously, in your red and that's going to be about your product or service. So plenty for you to do with that red micro habit. Uh, I'm not going too deep into this because that's the one that literally you'll find gazillions of blog posts about how to do that kind of thing. Um, the one that's more unique is the green, which is very rarely explained in, in any marketing. So in summary, I think the key takeaway here is you should be looking at building a lot of connection regularly, small connection points, building trust before starting to post and feel like spamming people and asking them to, to click on important 
asks, whether it's events or buy-in products. And these three together, when you start running this, this sort of the baseline, the midline, and then the high treble of your music sheet of drumbeat over time, when you combine those, it sandbox your effort so that you don't get lost in social media and stay too many hours wondering how you can get out of it, but getting yourself influence and traction, growing your network while still posting relevant content. Now, if you think this video is useful, I'm doing my usual, this is my red, subscribe for more in the YouTube channel. Um, and as I said earlier, this is about conscious growth hacking. So the, the experiment here is how do we do this consciously? There's lots of people out there doing, you know, click whoring as we call it. But how do you do this so that you can actually build a conscious relation with people online and not just be one extra loud person talking? Um, let's see how it works. I'm very curious to hear how you actually do this. If you're a social media manager and that you've got insights about just testing this out, try it out, let us know in the comments. If uh, you're a CEO of a startup and that you have very limited time and budget, also try it out. It might be that this actually nails a big part of your connection building. Why did we choose LinkedIn? Because actually in the startup world, it's probably the number one network to build yourself your network around both investors and potential collaborators and employees, which are the three bottlenecks of the startup space. You need to hire people, you need to find investors, and you need to build traction online with, unless you're in B2C sales, in which case you're going to need to use other social media channels. But if you're really on a B2B market and a startup, probably LinkedIn could be a good start without having to complexify too many things. Trust me, I've, I've been into too much complexity when I was working in an ad agency I've seen multi-channel uh, go really too far. So try it out. Let me know how it goes. Um, be fun to hear. Um, anything builds, things to make it better, things I forgot, lots of them probably. And any praise as well is very welcome about how this works out for you.